Don't mind if there's extra noise. It's because I have a puppy here. Um, I mean, you're welcome to see her if you really want to see her. But I'm just going to hold my comfort pumpkin and my comfort puppy. Do you see her nose? There it is. And uh, <laughs> she's like super annoyed with me right now. And we are going to do a little chat. I wanted to, what oh, baby? She's so cute right now. I guess I should show you to show her to you. Suki. Hi, baby. Do you see you? Look at that perfect baby angel. Mm. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is uh, it is hard coming back from an incredible, by the way, this is the fit. <laughs> Hard coming back from an incredible vacation that is just amazing, like in every way. And then trying to be like, you know, come back to normal life and act like everything is like back to normal. And sometimes you just, it's hard to go back to normal when you just want to cuddle, don't you? It's hard to go back to normal when life was so amazing and adventurous and you're constantly just doing stuff and going out to places and being with family especially in my case when we adventure we adventure with family and sometimes that's the only time I get to spend with family so it can be really really hard to come back to not having any of that when you come home and so I wanted to give some tr tips and tricks on how to kind of get over having one of the most epic and incredible vacations and adventures and how to, you know, not feel so sad or like depressed, especially when you're coming back and suddenly it's cold and it's no longer summer and, you know, life goes on and life is very different. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to give you some tips and tricks on how to navigate that kind of emotion and those sort of situations. So if you're anything like me, the most exciting events happen in the summer. My birthday is in the summer. Our anniversary, our wedding anniversary is in the summer. And most of my adventures happen in the summer. And I am a summer baby. So to me, summer and, you know, I had been a teacher for so long and obviously a student before that. And so the summer was always like freedom. It always meant lazy days and relaxing and breathing and just enjoying and taking your time with stuff and compile that with now not only is summer over but also now the vacation is over you're coming home back to reality what do you do to mitigate those feelings of sadness or depression or just generally you know, I guess darkness in a way, because now if you're anything like me, you also get seasonal depression on top of all of that. So here are some suggestions I have on how to come back from incredible vacation and get ready for what is to come next and how to not feel so sad when something like that is over or ends. Now, I love the summer, but I would be remiss if I were to say that I didn't absolutely love spooky season. And so to me, as soon as September happens, it is officially spooky season. Um, I get cozy, I get my favorite spooky fits out, and that is some of how I can navigate being okay with summer being over. I look forward to things that are related 
to the fall and the winter. Now, it's very hard to enjoy anything after Christmas or New Year's because, you know, it's just, there's nothing, there's no holidays, but here's the, here are some of the things that I do and my sister helps me with. Um, before I come back, I always make sure to have something planned or several somethings planned to look forward to. I have things in my calendar that are purely just things that bring me joy. So that could be planning on doing a little sip and paint with some friends. It could be what uh, Kelly likes to do and bring she brings me to New York City and we go to see Broadway and it's always incredible. We have brunch. We enjoy the city. She has surprises for me ready. Um, but also like fall things are so fun and something that I always look forward to. So I always keep my mind on that sort of stuff too. It does. It also helps that hubby's birthday is in October. So I'm always looking for fun things leading up to his birthday because we're both very into spooky season. I'll also plan things like um, near us we have Six Flags and they have like a Halloween fest. So we'll do that. Uh, we love going on haunted hay rides. We love doing pumpkin picking with our friends and their babies. Uh, apple picking and then after that we make apple pies together. It's just there's something to be said about having tradition and uh, just looking forward to doing things and then also because we're creatives, we like to create not just necessarily content, but like we like to do photos and like have photo sessions that about things that inspire us. And as the season gets a little cooler, it's nicer to be outside. The lighting can be really beautiful for photos, stuff like that, even video. So we also like to kind of put our creative caps on and do things that inspire us and make us happy and do like spooky photo sessions or um, just like fall, Halloween, cutesy couple things. Uh, but yeah, just, just planning those things can be so exciting and really just take your mind off of what just ended and really put you in the mindset of things that you can look forward to. And I'm not just talking about Halloween and stuff like that. I mean, obviously after Halloween, we have Thanksgiving, which generally we spend with family. And then of course there's Christmas and all the holidays that happen with that and the Christmas lights and all that sort of stuff. But um, for me, it really kicks off with Halloween and the spooky season and like the super cute fits. I mean, I am obsessed and it's like kind of my way of being able to bring my little dark witchiness out. Like generally speaking, I am very, I mean, you could see my room. It's pink, white, fluffy. <laughs> like, oh, it's, what are you doing? Come here. It's just really like, I was a girly, but very um, just soft and, you know, like, do you want to leave? You can go if you want. Move the pillow. It's just like not your dark femme aesthetic, but I'm, I would be lying to you if I told you I didn't have that. Like there is a side to me that I'm really like into the dark femme and that is so me. I am just super, like there's something about being a little witchy and a little bit of magic and mysterious and corsets and lace and fishnets and big black shiny boots. I mean, there's just something to be said about having a little ethereal darkness about you. And that is very me. So it's my one time of year where I kind of get to bring out, there's some cutesy things for sure, but then I can also play with a darker, more fierce and sexier side than I don't usually let out during the rest of the year. So I also have that to look forward to. But yeah, 
Um, and also like if you can, if it's at all possible, and I'm not saying like, cause usually in November, uh, my sister and I will go out and do something like leave the country, <laughs> but also in January or February, I feel like since those are the darkest and coldest days of the year, those would probably be the best time to plan something to leave like something with palm trees and beaches you know what i'm saying like that way you can look forward to those darker drearier months and have a bit of sunshine and kind of bat away some of that seasonal depression that a lot of us get and come back and you know spring is starting to show up that sort of thing that's my suggestion uh but yeah, and I also kind of love with fashion for me, like I love to play with the different things coming in fashion and uh, when it comes to different seasons, obviously, you know, clothes change based on what the season is. So um, I can be a little more creative fashion wise as well because you're more likely to wear layers, all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Uh, those were some of my ideas and some of the things that I do to kind of combat some of the sad feelings of when something incredible ends, like when we came back from Aruba or when, um, you know, just now, like we, came, you know, hubby and I came back from Italy. Like, what did I have planned? Well, my sister obviously had some things planned and also I looked forward to seeing the puppy. So I have that as well to look forward to being with our friends. You know, hubby planned something for my birthday when we came back, so I had something really special to look forward to. Um, I didn't know about the surprise part, but I knew that he was going to, like, make me dinner, and I thought that was really sweet and special. And so I looked forward to him, you know, like, making another day before August ended really special and kind of about me. And, yeah, so if you have people in your life that also like to surprise you and make you smile um you know this is one way that they could do that like have things planned for you when you come back from a vacation or an adventure or something you've really experienced and you're kind of sad is over but anyway i hope those tips and tricks helped i hope i gave you some ideas to kind of even going forward into the seasons as they start to get darker and colder and seasonal depression eventually kind of sets in. Um, so I hope that helps, but I also hope you had an amazing day. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Um, real quick, let me show you what I am wearing because I think you might love it. So let me show you real quick. Okay, as promised, the fit for today, I mean, hello. I mean, honestly, yeah. So cute, right? Ah, I love it. Anyway, I hope you have an amazing day. And uh, let me go back. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to show it to you real quick. Okay. Oh my God, so cute, right? Mm. Okay, yeah. So it's Sailor Moon. I mean, like you, you get it. It's adorable. We're going for the witchy vibes today. Um, but anyway, I, I just wanted to share it with you real quick. Uh, but yeah. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to do an oat-free granola recipe because on my journey of being healthy, I'm realizing that there are certain foods that, yeah, you, you it's not, I'm sorry, I have suki fur in my mouth. Did I get it? Oh, there it is. It's not necessarily about moderation, but there are some things that you really should genuinely just avoid and you don't necessarily have to have them in your diet. And I, through experience, oats are one of them. So that's why I'm going to help you create an oat-free granola um, that you can put in, like I like to put it in the yogurt uh, with some fresh fruits, strawberries, blueberries, all those things. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's what we're doing tomorrow. And this weekend is just going to be nice, relaxing. Uh, maybe we can clean together because I need to get all this cleaned up. Uh, it's about time. And yeah. And then next week, next week's going to be really fun. I have a lot of really cool ideas that I want to do with you. So stay tuned for that. And yeah. Anyway, 
please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow. Until next time.